Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith, and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, mixing video frame rates in Adobe Premiere Pro, including the new Optical Flow. All right, first of all, I want to uh, start off by saying any of my demos have, I've never changed any of the frame rates. And let me tell you, I've had everything from 25, 24, 23, 976, uh, 2997. I've mixed everything in any uh, timeline. And if you notice something jittering, well, consider yourself a little bit uh, more uh, conscientious because I never notice it. That being said, in the broadcast world, or a film world or cinema world, no one would do that. You you have to be very specific about converting frame rates from 23, 24, 29, 97. And Premiere Pro has always had two options, and now there's a new option called Optical Flow. I want to take you through the differences between the two and uh, let you make the decision of, of where you want to use them. All right, so let's start by looking at this clip here, which I've added a... Um, a time marker so we could see one frame at a time. This is 23976 originally shot on a red and as I go through it's one frame at a time. Seems pretty obvious. Now I've taken all of these uh, clips originally at 23976 and I've placed them inside a 2997 um, timeline. And at this point, you do need frame blending. You can't get away from this. So something as simple as a time count. If I move ahead one frame, and I'll zoom in so you can see I'm actually moving one frame. And by default, Premiere Pro uses frame sampling, and it looks at the nearest frame, and it's picked by proximity. So it's only looking at the frames, and it duplicates that frame. As we get in here, two number ones, one, two, three, four, and then another one at five, another one at nine. It's duplicating those frames for us. So if we go back in here and look at this clip, and here we are, one, two is the same frame, six, seven, you get the idea. And when we play this back, the discerning eye will notice a little bit of a jittery effect. Let's look at this example. Same thing, there's duplicate frames in there. Okay, so you can select all of these, right click, and choose time interpolation. By default, it's frame sampling. Frame blending is based on different frames. So frame blending actually looks at different frames. And you can see, as I made a change right here, you can get ghosting going on. So let me go back and change that frame sampling, frame blending. The benefit of frame blending is it's actually creating new frames. Um, so it's going to be a bit smoother overall without that jitter. But you might notice that kind of ghosting. Those are, that's the two different versions that have been inside Premiere Pro since the beginning. And now Adobe Premiere Pro introduces Optical Flow. And the way that Optical Flow works, and uh, I'm gonna have to consult my notes here because I wanna get it right. Um, um, I definitely had uh, help from Steve Mims and Steve Hogue over at Adobe, great engineers. And it's GPU accelerated. So if you have a GPU, optical flow is accelerated, it, and it's, but it's a different calculation. So when you turn GPU acceleration off or on, the optical flow, flow result will be different. Um, it looks at frames that would have been in between, and it tries to artificially construct a brand new frame, which is pretty darn cool. OK, um, it uses things called motion vectors. This is the way all optical flow um, algorithms work is they look at this and then they look at this and they draw a vector and they're looking at where pixels are going. And it's trying to imagine where those pixels uh, are going to go. There will never be any ghosting. It's always solid pixels that it creates. The only problem is it might cause um, artifacts if there is occlusion or obstructions. Um, in the examples I'm going to show you, you'll see that when Premiere Pro doesn't really have a good idea of where the pixels are going, sometimes you get errors. 
It doesn't mean that it, there isn't a good place for this. So let's have a look at optical flow. So after the render, you can see that the numbers are actually trying to blend together. Optical flow is trying to see where the pixels are going and blend those. If we go to this clip and I start to play it, it may not look like there's any differences, but once we get to some of these changes, there you go. Look at the upper right and the top section. You'll see some artifacts showing up. Uh, and that's simply because the pixels don't know where they're going. There's a lot of similar colors in this, and this is a fairly dark scene. And, you know, a lot of it looks okay. Watch the wall here. Look at this. So optical flow is just not going to do the job that we want it to do for this one. Let's look at the next one here. Perfect. Absolutely nothing wrong with this one. Let's look at the last one. This looks pretty good, except for the parquet floor. Have a look at the floor. When, the, when they're walking around, you'll see a few artifacts showing up where they're walking. See that there as you trail behind. And also when they get very close, you'll also see some artifacts show up. That edge right there, which is one frame, you may not see that. Now the last place that, that we can output this, if we leave all of this the way it is to our default uh, frame sampling. When we go to output this, there's a new setting in the output called optical flow. So before we only had the two options, now we can output optical flow. This will only change, uh, this will only kick in for the uh, clips that are a different frame rate. So if I turn on optical flow and I have a timeline full of 2997 and the, and the sequence is 2997, optical flow won't help at all. It's just only when there's a difference. If I throw in a 24p clip into 2020, 2997, only that one clip will be set to optical flow. So when it works, it's pretty miraculous. There, it actually reconstructs new frames. What I would suggest for broadcasters is this is not a get it and set it and forget it kind of setting. You have to uh, babysit it and watch it. Um, uh, because you won't know you've got artifacts until you render it out. Oh yeah, that's the other thing um, I wanted to explain is that you have to render out on the timeline uh, to be able to see it. When you engage optical flow anywhere in a timeline in Premiere Pro, you'll get frame sampling, not frame blending and not optical flow. It defaults to that because you can't play back optical flow without rendering. You must render it, go to the sequence menu, render in to out that you can set on that clip, and then you'll be able to see it. All right. Wow. Well, I want to say thank you to all the folks uh, for all their support on Video Revealed. Appreciate it. If you're new to Video Revealed, please subscribe. And if you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, there's a special link in the description for you to get your free 30-day trial. All right. Until next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best. Thank you.